Today's topic, your cheating heart is clearly cheating at hearts. Welcome to another episode of Table Scraps, in which we present a topic related to tabletop gaming and then have a brief conversation about it with the live audience. Let's not waste any more time listening to this weird intro music. Let's get right into today's discussion. Hey there, and welcome to another episode of the experimental, month-long, daily series, Table Scraps, where we discuss a question about tabletop gaming presented to us by the viewing audience with the viewing audience. So if you're joining us live, I hope that you are ready for some discussion on today's topic, which comes to us from Trevin, who requests a discussion on the topic of cheating. How often does it happen? And what do you do when it does happen? Is the cheater ever invited back? Do you ever cheat? Is it true that it's only cheating if you get caught? And Trevin says, I promise this is serious. Is it truth or myth that microwaving dice can turn them into cheating devices? If so, are people allowed to use their own dice or must they use house dice? Should dice towers be allowed? Required. Trevin has so many questions. Let's get right into answering them. Well, Trevin, first of all, you may be surprised to know that as a self-proclaimed board game media personality, I have encountered cheating multiple times and have been the cause of it myself. So what does this mean? Am I, am I evil? Well, probably, but no, that's, that's not what I'm talking about when it comes to cheating. What I have found is that, especially when learning a game, inevitably there's gonna so come someone who two thirds of the way through the game is gonna stop and go, oh, I just realized that I've been cheating this entire time. I've been doing this rule wrong. And so it happens. So. I see there as being two types of cheating. There's the accidental cheating, and then there is the intentional cheating. And of course, you know, the severity of each one will of course depend on how it affects the game, but also of course the gaming environment. If it's a casual gaming environment and it happens, more likely than not people, we all just try to backtrack as much as we can to undo that turn or series of turns. And if it's a casual environment too, it's usually just like, well, you know, now we know for next time and you know, we have a house rule and there's an asterisk on the game. If it's more of an official tournament setting though, of course, well, you know, that's when cheating becomes very important because in a tournament or contest setting, you wanna make sure that everyone of course is playing by the same playbook. So, you know, when cheating happens in that environment, then you absolutely want to bring it to you know, the judges or your opponent's attention and take the appropriate action. Fortunately, I myself have never been in the situation yet where I have accidentally cheated in a tournament environment but I have certainly accidentally cheated more than my fair share uh, learning a game in a casual environment. Let's go to your other questions though. Is it true that it's only cheating if you get caught? Well, no. I, I, I think if, if the person realizes they're cheating, as soon as they make that realization, uh, you know, whether it's intentional or accidental, as soon as they make that realization, you know, it, it's cheating. And what they do about it at that point uh, demonstrates their character. Um, I, I don't personally understand cheating because it, it's not fun. I mean, even, you know, when I was younger in playing against my brother and sister, like Monopoly and stuff, yeah, you know, you'd sneak money out of the bank and, and, and stuff. And, you know, for the cheater, it's, it's not even, even fun. Uh, a lot of people, I think, cheat because they think that losing isn't fun. And I wholeheartedly disagree. If you crash and burn at a game and lose and it generates a story to tell, sometimes losing a game can be more fun than winning it. Um, it just depends on how you handle it, I guess. And I also wanted to address the question here of microwaving dice, if that can turn them into cheating devices. Well, maybe if they melt a little bit or or such and especially if the if the dice have like air bubbles inside of them maybe that can cause them to shift and make the dice be off centered maybe however i would think that microwaving dice would not give you the level of control that you would need to really create loaded dice i mean you'd have to first of all either do it a lot and ruin a lot of dice to become an expert at it 
or you'd have to know what's inside the dice to know how you want to shift those air bubbles inside. Uh, personally speaking, I don't know if people do it. If everyone has ever had an experience or seen a video or heard anything about microwaving dice to turn them into cheating devices or load the dice, let me know because I personally have, have never encountered any such stories. But since it's related to microwaves, sure, why not? I would be interested in learning more. And so let me know in the comments below. And also, let me know in the comments right here in the live chat if you have a question or a comment related to this topic. We're going to start here with a comment by Toyota Wolf, who says, I have encountered cheating, quote unquote, due to rules being done wrong. Is that cheating? Sometimes I will also house rule something to cheat in order to stop getting railroaded by the game. We've encountered that too in my game group, Toyota, uh, where the entire game group just realizes that they have been cheating because they've been doing a rule wrong. A at that point, what we actually usually do is we say, okay, this game was unofficially house ruled. We've all been playing it wrong this way. Let's just continue the entire game playing it this wrong way. And the next game will play it the right way. And, and that way everybody still remains on the same level playing field. I'd be interested to know what others do in that same situation because it's, you know, by the nature of board gaming and especially with some of these complex games that we can get into, it's definitely something that I know can happen. So it'd be interesting to get multiple people's perspective on, on how they handle that. Let's continue on to Kabuki, who says, Accidental cheating isn't actual cheating, I'd say. That's just someone goofing up. And I agree, mistakes can be made. I think if someone realizes that they are accidentally cheating, but then keeps their mouth shut and continues using that exploit to get ahead in the game, then I think they cross the line into cheating. I think a lot of cheating um, comes down to the realization that something is wrong. Christian mentions, I do refuse to play with players who cheated incidentally. Uh, oh, incidentally is a very interesting word there. Do you mean casually cheated or do you mean accidentally cheated? I would welcome any clarification on that because to me, there is a subtle difference there. Again, it comes down to the realization of whether they're doing it, whether they think, ah, oh, it is no big deal. You know, I got an extra dollar bill out of that. It's not who cares? Or if it's like, oh no, I've been taking an extra dollar bill this whole time. I'm sorry. You know, to me, there is a difference there. So I would love the clarification there and to know which one each of you have experienced. Sasha mentions, we had some cheaters when I ran uh, Lord of the Five Rings tournaments. As we got reports of them cheating, they all for some reason had to play each other all the time. <laughs> well, that is an elegant s solution. Since they were annoying anyways, everyone was happy. Well, that's one, th that's, that's one thing that's really nice. I've heard of uh, a massive online multiplayer game where if you had a hack or cheat code that the game detected, you got thrown into a specific instance of the game that was segregated from the rest where only the cheaters went to that spot. So you got stuck playing with all the other cheaters. So again, I think that's a very elegant, very, very crafty solution to the problem right there. Ethan mentions, we have had a hard rule in our game group. That is, anyone has ever found cheating, they will not be invited back. Fortunately, we've never had to enforce it. Then that's, that is fortunate. I, I have never had to enforce such a rule in any of the gaming events that I've participated in. So that's, that's really nice. I, I'm curious if anyone ever has had to confront someone over cheating, what happened? Did they ever try to return? Was there a big argument about it? You know, if the cheater is going to cheat, they're probably also going, I would imagine they would also, you know, be open to having conflict about it too. If they're going to cheat, they're probably also going to argue. So I'm wondering how simple it was to remove the cheater out of your group. Because again, that's not something I've had personal experience with, but I think it would be helpful information. Sasha mentions, I've never noticed cheating while playing with friends. I mean, sure, some mistakes are made, but we try to fix them if possible and move on. No intentional cheating and no harm done. Well, that's really good. And actually that kind of raises a question. I'm wondering then, what is the percentage? How frequently do we as gamers encounter cheating? Because the conversation is starting to make it seem like it is fortunately, the minority. So if you have uh, encountered cheating, let me know in the comments, um, either after the show or in, in the chat here, how often is it a problem? Because like I said, for me, unless it's something we're doing wrong, it's kind of a universal mistake type of cheat. I've never really encountered it, at least not that I've noticed. 
Let's continue on with Jonathan, who says, I have issues with accidental cheating and wouldn't even call it such. It's just learning the game. Absolutely agree. Uh, in my game group, we have a saying, the first game is always a learning game, so we know we're gonna make mistakes. And going into it with that attitude, I think really, really, really helps. Jonathan continues though, saying purposeful cheating is just annoying, and I don't like playing with people who do that. There's enough to keep up with in a game without having to watch your every move as well. It's nice when you reach that level of trust with a group, where you don't have to babysit each of their turns. You know, especially when you're learning a game, everyone seems to be kind of watching everyone else's turns to make sure that everyone's doing the turns right and you know, while we're learning the flow. But when you get to the point where you learn the game, where you don't have to babysit everybody's turn, and you can just play with the confidence that everyone's gonna do their turns correctly, that's really refreshing when you're playing the game. Also, when you reach that level of trust where you know you don't have to watch everybody's turn because they're not gonna be cheating, that's extra refreshing because it allows you to really just immerse yourself in the game experience and, and not have to worry about all of the maintenance and the bookkeeping that's going on around you. So that's really something I know that myself and the others I play with really appreciate when we can hit that point with each other. For Curdo joins us to say, my brother usually cheats because he finds it fun to do it. Not to win, but for the thrill of doing it. He also finds it fun to get caught. That's so frustrating and I'm, I'm sorry for that. I, I have, oh man, growing up, some circle of friends like in grade school and middle school and stuff, there were a circle of friends where there were a few people that kind of had that mentality. Uh, they just wanted to see the game burn and be disruptive. Um, there was a role-playing game that we used to play and, you know, uh, pen, paper, and dice and everything. And one of the player's characters, no matter what new scenario we were doing or what characters we rolled up, the very first thing that that character would do would be to try to secretly steal the equipment off the other players every single time. And, and it became a little bit of an annoyance. It, it, it was something that as, you know, the uh, fellow game players, we had to figure out how to mitigate and prevent and, and get past. And it, it, did disrupt, it did disrupt the flow of the game. So uh, for Curdo, I can totally understand the frustration in, in trying to play with someone who is just there to cause that sort of uh, chaos and uh, play against the game in that way. So hopefully have been able to find a new play group where that's no longer an issue because boy howdy that that would be really irritating let's go to an interesting question by jonathan who says for a sidebar is it cheating in a co-op if everyone agrees and alters a rule just to get past an annoyance and or make the experience more enjoyable that is a very good question on the one hand you could see it as just being a house rule that everyone agrees to because that's what house rules are but on the other side, it's a co-op, so you do have this additional player who is taking part in the game, but doesn't have a voice, and that is the game itself. The game has its rules that it was written by, so if the game's rules aren't gonna be able to change its, you know, itself, it doesn't really have a say in the matter. And so in a way, everyone's teaming up against the game, against, you know, and the game is a player in that aspect. So, I'm torn. I don't know. House rule or cheating? I'm not sure. I think in the best case scenario, it I would consider it a house rule that while okay, cheapens the win. So that, that's 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 how I would put it. Curious to know what everyone else thinks on that, because that's a very fascinating little aspect of co-ops to, to think about. Okay, let's go to Fail Road Express, who says what if you realize that you've been playing the game wrong and correcting it mid-game would be unfair? That happens more often than I like to admit. And I think I, I mentioned already in the episode that in the cases where that has happened with my own game group, what we usually do is it depends how far into the game we are. Well, if we're not, if we're less than just a few turns in, we usually restart. If we're more than just a couple turns in and the game is, is progressing pretty well, we usually kind of keep that as the house rule for that game, we play it broken, but we but it allows us to play it consistently for that game, and then the next time we know better and, and we, we we play it that way. That's the approach we take, Fail Road. So I hope I hope that helps. Trev Trevin mentions a little more about the microwaving dice issue. The urban legend goes that microwaving a die for short bursts will affect the plastic to make it 
heavy on the down-faced side, loading it for the up-face, but no visual difference. You know, this just may require an experiment. Um, as you all know, I have a microwave, and I'm looking for things to do with it, uh, like talk about it for some reason, apparently. So this just actually may need to be uh, a little video, uh, perhaps a component proponent video, do an actual Mythbusters type experiment about it. Um, I'm gonna add that to the list of potential videos to do because I'm curious about it too. Christian mentions a clarification on his earlier comment. By incidental, he meant on purpose. Okay, yes. Um, on purpose cheating, I would totally agree. <whistles> Guys out of there. If you're gonna cheat, you're a jerk and you're just disrupting the game for everybody. So yeah, I, I, I'm totally on board with that approach, uh, Christian. And I think, I think, hope, I hope the majority of the board gaming hobbyist public would be feeling the same way. We're gonna wrap up with kind of a follow-up comment about the co-op situation from Action Troll, who says, here's an example. An example of co-op cheating in our house Two-player pandemic, each player gets two powers. And, and, and there you go. That's, um, see, I, I wouldn't consider that cheating. I would consider that to be like a variant, you know, a house rule variant, because it's not just one person doing it, and it's you're playing a co-op game and everyone agrees to it, and you're playing it consistently that way. The question, to be fair, the question does remain, does that cheapen the win if you beat the game? Well, I'm gonna leave that up to your own personal experience because I think that that is something that only the person playing the game in that instance really has the authority to answer for themselves. So the one thing I can answer though is that we are out of time for this episode. So if you have more ideas or comments or suggestions on the topic of cheating in games, whether intentional or accidental, let me know in the comments below or over on our Facebook or Twitter pages where you're welcome to continue the conversation on this and other board gaming topics there as well. And before we go, I just wanna remind everybody that this episode that you're watching right now with your little peepers was made possible by the peeps over at our Pod Pledge fundraiser page. Thank you so much for your support. That's what's keeping episodes like this uh, rolling along. And in the meantime, we will be rolling along to the next episode. And until that episode, I've been Chaz Marler, who, along with the YouTube live streaming chat, have been serving up some table scraps. Talk to you again soon. Start recording. Recording the content always works good for working on a video. <laughs> hey! Scrolling upwards into the future of the chat window with the live viewing audience. So there's kind of that, that twist. I'm gonna just start that over because I don't know where I'm going with that. You may be surprised to know that as a board game, as a board game, I'm not a board game. Ah, what's the word I'm looking for there? I just had it. Um, when you're doing it, um, not, uh, the, oh well, bad. Okay, we'll say bad.